um, we like to do is we like to have fun. But one of the problems that we have at the office in particular is that we have a single bathroom. This one bathroom services about 15 to 20 people. It's across two different teams, uh, two companies shared co-working space. You can't see the door from where you are. So it's, it's kind of in that space right there. Um, and this leads to a pretty obvious problem. Like you get up, you go to the bathroom, someone's in there, you're like, oh yeah. And so you go back, sit down. And then a couple minutes later, you go back and you do, you repeat this over and over again. And it's really annoying. And it actually is, is somewhat stressful just a little bit because what will happen is you're like, can I go? Should I go? Do I go now? Do I go later? What, what do I do? Um, so of course we're engineers though. So what do we do? We, we, we buy a pie and then we take an old one, of course, because we're cheap engineers. And then we take a door sensor from element 14. Um, and we slam them together and we build this thing that tells us the door is open because it's so important to know. And so this is us running the night. Um, huzzah! Hey, all right. So um, for us, this is, uh, this is, it's ghetto rigged. It's literally taped to the door. I, I untaped it to bring it to you guys so I could show you guys here today. Um, but you know, this thing is awesome. It's, it's bulletproof. It basically, it was up 25 days uptime. You know, that's, that's cool, right? For being taped to a wall. How much, how much can you uh, complain about that? So let's see if this sucker is still working. Um, Hey, so this is the rudimentary thing, right? But and it, it, uh, the Pi runs Ruby. It's, uh, it's just a Ruby binding to the, the GPIO pins. Um, and it's really simple. But well, come on, guys. We're Rails engineers, right? Why do we stop there? We don't want to stop there. We never do, right? So we do start doing ridiculous things. Like um, it just so happens to turn out that you can actually go to this if you want. Uh, all right, let's do this. Um, so yeah, why, why stop there? So you can actually go to this. If you get on the Wi-Fi, um, it'll hit my computer. You can't actually go through the internet. I tried to do that. Pi wasn't being happy. Anyways, so we can, do, we can do crazy stuff like see all the different stats that we have. So Monday would have been like four visits total. Oh, I didn't update this database because it's my local machine. But um, you know, an hour 25, shortest three minutes, whatever, you know, it's, it's a little interesting S stats for those who are interested as data scientists, any, any data scientists? No. Okay. Just kidding. But you know, we get to see how people come and visit over time. Um, and because this is rails five, we're like, why not? Right, let's, let's throw an emoji chat system into it, um, for fun. But anyways, um, so this is, this is all, this is all Rails 5. And so the cool thing is it's very fast, right? Um, I was hoping to show this over the internet because it's, it feel, it's just as fast, basically. Um, and so you know it, the door opens and shuts. And the beautiful thing is um, you can notify, be notified of the next open. So I'm sitting here. I don't want to pay attention to this, right? Um, I want to go do other things. And then because it's a JavaScript alert, it'll just take over my machine and tell me that I need to go to the bathroom. And you're like, yes, come on, guys. Um, so this is, uh, this is what we, you know, a little bit of the fun that we have doing. And so this is, this is Rails 5. This is Action Cable. And this is how us at Guava Pass, we start doing things. We take little ideas, and we start with them. We grow them. And so now we're taking um, Rails 5, and we're building a new entire platform with Action Cable, um, React on the front end. and. So these are the kind of things that we want to do. And so to bring it back, I want, to, I want to show you guys just a small part of it, specifically the three main parts of Action Cable. If you've already done Action Cable, don't you know, go to sleep. This is boring to you. But um, the three main parts of the JavaScript client, the thing that consumes it, the channel where we sit and wait for stuff to come, and then the broadcaster, which is obviously firing the event and sending the actual data. So I'm going to apologize. I'm going to sit down for this particular part. Um, and we're just going to run through it. So um, here we go. So with Rails, we can do something like Rails G channel. Um, the user's connected. So 
Oh, can I zoom in a bit? How do I zoom in on this? Command, well, uh, okay, cool. Let's see how well this works. Uh, all right. Is that, how are we doing? Awesome. Someone, someone tell me what's going on. Okay, cool. Um, so what I want to do here really quickly is just build a simple feature of knowing who's connected to the website. Um, if, you, if you look back at the website, um, my name is Luke Skywalker. When you refresh this guy, you get a different Jedi name, okay, uh, obviously. Yeah. Why not, right? Okay, so um, using the scaffold, we uh, start building the, you know, just using it. And because it's an existing project, I don't want to overwrite anything. But it'll create two main things for us. It's the channel right here, um, as well as the CoffeeScript um, consumer side. But we still have to build the broadcaster side. So if I open up, uh, OK, here we go. Uh, no, this is only going to, OK, it's not going to blow up my directory. So um, I apologize. But if we go into the app, most of you guys should know this pretty well. Um, the new thing, of course, is the channels folder. And then so we can see that I have the chat channel, which is the emoji chat. Um, I've got the door events, which obviously open and close. And then now the new one is the user connected. So from the user connected, we have two basic subscribed and unsubscribed functions. Everything happens um, for the handling of the channels in these two, inside these, inside these files. So the main thing that we want to do is when I subscribe, I want to stream from something. So I stream from a channel name. Now this is key. You have to remember these two things. It's some channel and users connected uh, channel. These are actually separate names, but in a lot of tutorials that you'll read online, they, they look really similar. And so it can get kind of confusing when you're going through it. I definitely got confused the first time. All right. So for this, we're going to say new users. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all I have to do to be able to listen in a particular channel. So then um, I need want to broadcast um, onto the particular channel. And so what we've done is with this particular project, uh, you get assigned a name when you load the controller. So on the home controller, I have a set username. So I want to broadcast to this. So it's action cable.server.broadcast. Did I spell that right? Uh, let's hope so. And then the first argument that it takes is the name of the channel. So this is like a Redis channel, really similar. And then we pass it the information we want as a hash. So HTML, now please don't ever do this, of course, but I'm going to do terrible practices. Um, welcome, let's say, at nickname to the channel. This is HTML, so I, want, I need to break it. And then HTML is safe. As I said before, please never do this in real life. Uh, let's do something like bolding the name so it's easier to see. Um, and then that's, that's it. That's all I have to do to set up the, the sending of the data. So now I need an anchor point. I want it to show up on the page. And so my goal is to kind of get it to show beneath the currently connected here. No one's connected. Interesting. Um, is anyone trying to get on? Just kidding. No. Home index. So I'm going to go to the home index and place it in really fast under currently connected. So row call SM12. Uh, we use Bootstrap, obviously. Uh, let's do a well. And then we're going to do new dash users. OK, so now I have a place to anchor my data that I wanted to go to. So the last piece is anyone? The consumer side? Uh -huh. OK, so for the consumer side, we go into the assets. And inside the assets, um, there's uh, the JavaScript folder. And then your new folder is this channels folder. This is how you consume the particular data. So we have the channel that you're going to sit in, the way we broadcast it, and anchor to the data. Now we just need to consume the particular data. So um, inside the channels folder, I got the three, same three things um, like I do with the Ruby side. So I'm just going to go inside the coffee. Gives me a basic um, boilerplate. And the interesting piece to note when we start it is this name. This is what the, the, the WebSocket side, the, the Java, JavaScript side, is using to be able to identify which piece of Ruby code we're going to be running. 
And it's the name of the model, not the channel name. That's the other key part that I was hoping that everyone gets. Um, feel free to come by and ask me later. I actually don't know much. Just kidding. Um, so we want to anchor this particular data, append um, data. And then in my home controller, I broadcast on HTML. So man, they did a really good job. I just do that. And so this is basically all that we need to do to get this. Oh, there's six people connected. And so now um, what we can do is, oh, someone else connected. So this is what we can do. Uh, look at that. We're basically running WebSockets, guys. And so this is how you can add uh, different features. And uh, yeah, so you can consume, you can produce information. Um, you have to think a little bit differently, but this is all, I don't, I don't know. I love this. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But, and then we can have like emoji war or something like that. But anyways, um, OK. Fun time's over, guys. So um, some of the gotchas that we ran into while we were deploying this application and things that we ran in um, that we're going to be running into later is that you have a production RB and allowed request origins. This actually says what website you're coming from. Um, this will cause you to not understand why your applications, your WebSockets not connecting. Same with Apache and Nginx. You actually have to say I'm using WebSockets. Otherwise, it will outright reject it. It won't accept the connection. Um, if you're looking to do a little more advanced things, what we wanted to do with this originally was we wanted to have this guy running WebSockets as well. But it turns out you can't actually directly connect with Faye. And so because uh, when they built Action Cable, Action Cable is built on top of Faye. And so you have to use a, a small protocol that they built for this particular thing. Um, and there's a bunch of libraries out there that are already built, so you can just leverage them. But just know that if you try to connect a basic Faye um, client, it'll connect in. It'll look like it works. But then your, your server will just reject you. Um, and that's pretty much it. So thanks, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed. And uh, yes, we are definitely hiring right now. Uh, we're looking for two in Rails engineers now and then two over the next six months. So please come by, see me, ask any questions. Um, come play with the thing. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So does anyone have any questions for Justin? Can I, can I just find out whether the Rails is actually running on the Raspberry Pi? Uh, yeah. So um, I can sh the Rails for this guy. Oh, it's not Rails. is running on the Raspberry Pi. Apologies. It's running Ruby. Uh, um, so the, the Ruby side is very simple because this Pi is quite slow. Uh, guava dump. Um, let's just do. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have showed you guys that. Yeah, anyways. Um, so this is all it does. Uh, you do a pin dot. You create the pin up above, um, and then you wait for a change on the pin. It's just a it's just a loop, a loop true sitting there, and it, it's a blocking loop, um, and then it reads, and then it just passes oh, the open and close event all the way back up, and then we post the event to the web server. That's all it does. And what library are you using to read the um, It's James. You remember? Oh, Pi Piper. There we go. Thanks. Yeah. It's not regarding the solution, which I really like, but regarding the problem. Have you initially, before you decided to use Raspberry Pi, have you considered just putting a mirror in front of this door? Yeah, so actually our, our desks are, you can't even see the door from the desk or the whole area. We're behind walls, and actually uh, the dev team sits up a spiral staircase. So the, the cost of benefit analysis of going downstairs is very expensive. Any other questions, guys? I don't want to take up too much more. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs>